key areas has the private sector prioritized funded planning? The key areas that you have prioritized as private sector in family planning. In the private, uh, thank you so much, Madam Chair. And uh, I want to say this for us in the private sector, we say that if anybody is to be able to live a dignified life, you must be able to pay your way out as an adult. In effect, cultivate the power to earn income. And the power to earn income has got nothing to do with where you are located, your gender, your family background. It has everything to do with you being able to sell something for which customers will come again and again. And they are going to come again and again not because they are sympathizing with you as a widow, as a poor person, as a disabled person, but they are, they are coming to buy because what you are selling, one, meets their minimum expectations for that solution. Two, as you meet those minimum expectations, in the private sector, we're also saying you must be ready to compete with the unseen and the seen competitors. You will be selling eggs, but your market space is going to be invaded by supplier from Australia, from Brazil, we were to COVID. It's going to be invaded by a person that you know so well within Uganda, Dukachi, with all the machines, technology, finance, and they will have to compete with you. Be ready to meet that competition. So for us, in the private sector, we are saying financial independence is just the barest minimum for any meaningful and dignified family planning anywhere in the world. And it has been proved through research and other ways that there is a correlation, a very clear coordination or connection between financial independence and uh, family planning. Someone might be saying, where is an obvious evidence? I could take you to some part of the world where you are allowed to marry as many as four wives. But when you go there, you will find that these people are not having 50 children per family. But the person has married four wives. An African is here, he has got one, has, and one wife and has got 17 kids. And these 17 kids, the, 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 the father is 48. The daughter is already having four children. And I went to one of the parts of Uganda that I, I don't want to mention, where there was a grandmother at the age of 32. A grandmother. 27 has been mentioned already. Now that kind of a situation is worrying if you are not able to meet to meet the bare minimum of life. So, and for those who are religious, I can connect it to what you read in First Timothy chapter five, verse eight says, and it's better to read it verbatim. It says that, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house. He has denied that faith and is worse than an infidel. Which heaven is waiting for you if you are doing this kind of thing? Minimum, provide for your family respective where you are. And then the beauty about the private sector is this, that is, solutions can be sold from any level. In other words, in the private sector, we don't glamorize. There's no glamour in the way you try to start. Start where you are by selling solutions within your own reach. In other words, you are located up country, you are growing beans and flour, start with that one. But as you start doing that, manage your profits. Leave, plow your profits and keep expanding your resource envelope from where you have started. And at Enterprise Uganda, we believe any investment that continues to improve, modernize what you started with, will continue to become a big nest egg for your future for building empires. Thank you very much, Dr. Ochichi.